Hi gang, it's Wellness Wednesday and I'm Kathy Stevens. Welcome to the Wellness Wednesday workout. So as promised, hopefully my internet connection is working a little better today. And we will be doing this 60 up workout using the 60 up balance trainer. But let's talk a little bit before we get started. And uh, my wellness tip for today is motion is lotion. What do I mean by that? You know, as we age, our joints become a little bit more stiff and inflexible. Why? Well, the aging process. We start to lose a little cartilage. We get a little more dehydrated at the joint tissue level and everything gets a little stiffer. So oftentimes, even if you don't have a condition like arthritis, you can, after sitting a long time or when you first wake up in the morning or first try to get out of a chair, just feel stiff and achy. Well, we know that one way to combat that is through motion. That motion itself kind of sloshes around and draws oxygen and blood flow and synovial fluid, that's the fluid that surrounds your joints so that they don't rub against each other in movement, so that you have a smoother movement throughout your body. So what I wanna to do today is focus on moving joints every joint in every way that it moves. And I'm gonna practice that in our warm up. I'm gonna take you what I call 60 up from head to foot or head to foot to head. And we're gonna go up and down with each major joint, loosening and limbering and showing you those joint movements that you should be trying to do at some point every day, especially after you've been seated for a while or maybe even when you first wake up in the morning. So let's see who's here. I see. Pat's here, welcome, and I'm so glad you're watching, and Brian, uh, and Betsy, and Sheila, and I don't wanna to waste too much time because we have a lot to get to today, especially if we're gonna add that motion to lotion in our warm up, meaning that head to toe joint lubrication that is so healthy for your joints. And we'll talk a little more about that because besides movement, there's other key things you can do to try to keep your joints healthy, and we'll, I'll throw those tips out as we're going along. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I invite you to feel free to write in the chat box. Now I can't always see it until I come back from the board closer to my phone, but I'll try to address those and in particular address them at the end of the workout. Um, as always, make sure you have plenty of water because guess what, that's another joint healthy tip. Staying hydrated helps keep the joints hydrated. So that's very important. All right, so water, maybe a towel or something nearby in case you get a little sweaty, you need to wipe off your hands or your board. Um, I'm just gonna take one quick second to make sure that my phone is on mute. Okay, well, I'm gonna have a little background music for us just cause I'm a rhythmic kind of gal. I love that little beat. Hopefully you'll like it and leave me some feedback. Here we go. If you're new to 60 Up, take everything I do at level one. I'll always show you the easiest way to do something and then advance it for those of you that are regulars and want to put a little bit more emphasis into your workout or intensity. All right, let me turn this down just a bit. All right, let's come now and stand behind your 60 up board. Nice and tall. I'm so glad you made it here today. It's so nice to have a live audience. And as you know, they also post these on Facebook or no, on, well, they're on Facebook the members page all the time, but they'll also be posted on YouTube. All right, let's rock side to side and just get used to that board feeling again. So joint motion, let's start with the ankles and feet. Left, lift one heel and push into the toes. Feel how your feet can roll up and down, drawing blood into the muscles, the joints, the ligaments, down low. Now you'll also notice I'm bending one knee. It's kind of hard to see when I'm behind my board. So let me see if I can find an angle you can catch. So I'm here with the heels coming up and rolling, feeling that pressure as you push through the foot. I want you to feel your toes spreading in your toe box of your shoe. Chest up, chin up, posture. Let's think about that for a second. Chin parallel to the floor, shoulders level, sternum lifted, abdominals, just braced a little bit. So they keep that spine in good alignment. 
All right, now take the right foot only, put it up on the board, find your balance, and just circle it around. Now, if this is a little tricky starting off, you can keep it on the floor and circle it. Good. Notice how those poles really help steady you in the middle. Other foot, again, find your balance on the board, circle that ankle, or keep it on the floor. Nice. The ankle joint has a lot of movement to it, so you want to roll around. Now place both feet back flat on the floor, and from here we're just going to rock to the inside and outside of our ankles a little bit. There we go. I see a message here, so let's make sure. Hi, Betsy. All right, so what I'm doing now, I'm going to get on my board just so you can see what my feet are doing. You're on the floor, and you're just lifting and dropping. Ankles come up. Arch of the foot, ankles go down. Another important movement of that ankle joint, inversion and eversion. Good. Now from here, roll up onto your toes and then back onto your heels. Again, I feel like my board's a little bit in the way, so I'll do it up here. Up on your toes, back on your heels. You're on the floor and we're flexing those ankles. Remember, joint motion is lotion, so we're trying to Get those feet all the way up, nice and ready. Good. Now let's hold one knee up and circle the ankle around. By now, you guys have really done a good job on the ankle and calf muscle area. Other direction. And then let's take it down, other foot up. Oh, we're gonna get a little classical on you right now. Other direction. All right, now feet together, knees bending and extending, just a little bit, hips and knees sit back. I call this a mini squat, pulling blood flow into those hip and knee joints. Sitting back, just gently rocking in and out. Good job. Couple more. Last one, what else does the hip joint do? It goes out and in, out and in. Let's just loosen that leg outside and inside. Let the knee start to come up more towards the center and tap out. That's gonna start engaging your balance muscles too. All right, bring it down, other side. Tap in, tap out. Good. Opening that hip joint, bending that knee, extending that knee. Cross a little more. Lift, add a little balance element. And then we're gonna come back to that first leg and circle because this joint has a lot of movement capability. Be tall on that standing leg, hold on to those poles, keep it down low, circle it around. Other side, feel that rounding motion, loosening up, drawing blood flow, synovial fluid into that hip and pelvic girdle. All right, back to the floor. Now the spine, drop and roll. Oh, moving up that spinal column. I want you to think about how maybe you can do some of these moves even from a chair before you stand up. Or figure out how you can even do them first thing in the morning when you wake up and you're just lying in your bed. Maybe kick the covers off first. Good, flat back on the way down, roll nice and slow through. That's it. Two more times. Flat back down, roll through. Last one. Moving up that spine. Coming to the shoulder joint. Roll back down and around. The shoulder's kind of like the hip and pelvis. Lots of movement capability. Elevating and pulling it back down. And then we're going to take, I'm going to squeeze forward and back forward and back. Feel those muscles tug on the joint. Good, drawing in blood and oxygen. Now take one arm out, reach it over and back. So it goes away and towards the midline. Good, nice deep breath. Last one, hold it to the center, palm down, palm up. 
rotating in that joint. Good. A lot of problems with the shoulders, right? I know I have one side myself that doesn't move quite as well as the other one does. Now bring the hand to the forward position and climb the wall with your fingers. Up by your ear and down. Now, during any exercise, whether it's a warm-up loosening exercise like this, or strengthening exercise, balance or cardio, whatever we're doing, if something doesn't feel quite right, reduce the range of motion. So if this arm doesn't feel right going all the way up by your head, maybe a little bit of joint pain or discomfort, just keep it lower. And let's put that back in the pole. Other side, up and over, taking that arm in and away, loosening up that shoulder joint. So important because we need to use those arms, reaching up into cabinets, picking things up. We want to keep that shoulder girdle healthy, mobile. Here we go. Let's do one more time. Inhale and exhale, bring it out to the side, and then we rotate down and up. Good, palm up, palm down. And then from here, bring it to the front and climb that wall. Fingers up the wall, fingers down. Good. This is my sticky side. It doesn't go up quite as high. So we want to try to work through whatever functional range of motion you still have. Try to bring it to its edge of discomfort, but never through pain. Keep that posture tall. Last time. All the way up, fingers are also climbing, wiggling and loosening, and then put both hands back on the poles. Move your feet a little because they've been stationary and steady for a while, so keep that blood flow going. High lift with the knee, hip, knee, ankle, hip, knee, ankle. Good. And now bring it back to the center, chin in, chin forward, chin in. This is called neck retraction and it's really important to learn to retract the neck because we get stuck sometimes in that forward chin jet position which causes a lot of stress and tension in the neck now tilt right center left center right center and now we're going to look behind the shoulder to the right center now keep in mind Especially if you have any dizziness when you move your head too much, keep it minimal, especially in the warm-up like this. But we do want to try to keep a nice mobility through the neck. Two more, last one, and then to the center. All right, time to get moving. So I hope you felt that. Let's just move all the joints, the shoulders, knees, the hips, the feet, marching behind your 60 up. So let's address our stance. Feet are about shoulder width apart, as close as you can be to the back of your platform without hitting it. Light grip on those handles. Let's continue our warm up by internally bringing up that body temperature, that respiratory response, that heart rate. Just march. Good job. So what are some other joint health things you can do? Well, one is maintaining proper body weight. Because sometimes if you have added weight, it causes added stress to the joints. We'll have some nutrition tips on other Wednesdays. But in general, try to keep an ideal body weight for you. All right, tap up, tap and down, tap and down. Right in that middle or that center red line. Good, tap, down, tap, down. Two more, then we're gonna tap with the heel. Feel how the board shifts a little bit underneath your weight. Good, this is so important for that ankle mobility. Good, keep tapping. Just checking to make sure that I don't get any messages here. Oh, I'm glad you love the neck stretch. Sheila, thanks for letting me know that. Hit that heel, tap and down, tap and down. Again, 
tap. Now, now, now let's progress this to a little bit more of a brain challenge by doing two toes followed by two heels. Making you think this morning. Here we go. Heel, two. Notice how your body weight shifts a little bit. Back to the toes and the heels. This is great for strengthening the shin muscles, which are so important for walking gait. Again, two of each. Now we're gonna get a little trickier out in this next set. And rather than on the red, find the white and cross over. Not the white, the one. Keep going with that pattern if you can. What is the pattern? Two toes on one, two heels on one. Crossing the midline. We did that last week to challenge our brain, remember? And if you lose track, that's okay. Just figure it out and start alternating again. So I'm starting to edge out to the two cross. Nice, two toes, two heels. It's okay if you look down to see where you're at, but remember the goal is to try, whenever possible, to bring that head back up with the chin parallel to floor. Are you still remembering to do two toes, two heels? Good job. All right, back to the center point. Toe, toe, and heel. Nice. A couple more. Toe, and toe, and then heel. Beautiful. All right, bend the knees. Take a little break. Let your brain take a break too. Nice. I'm spreading my fingers as I do my little mini squat because sometimes we over grip those handles. And we want to make sure that we stretch those fingers out in between occasionally. Four more. Four. And three. Two. One. Okay, now I want you to step lunge with the right. Feel your pressure and push back. Then the left. Step. And I'm stepping right to the side of that red line in the middle. I don't want to let my body go through the bars, but I am leaning towards the bars. What does this feel like to you? Can you feel that pressure through the foot? How you have to catch it and then push it away? How you have to push through that foot and the strength of the thigh? <laughs> That's kind of like when you're lifting yourself up a step, right? You have to catch your weight and then push off. Or if you catch yourself from a forward fall, catch on that leg and push back. I love this one because it's not only a great leg strengthener, but it is, or it does have great carryover to fall prevention. So we're gonna add a little something. Have you ever noticed that when you get a little bit off balance, then all of a sudden you kind of have to catch up with your feet because you push back and then there's a little run, run, run. So we're gonna lunge, run, 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 lunge, run, run, run. Now this is going to hit several marks. One, leg strength. Two, foot agility, run, run, run. Three, probably get your heart rate getting up into a more cardio respiratory zone. Run, run, run. Run, run, run. Lunge, run, run, run. Now if that is too much for you, remember I said if you're a newbie, I'll give you the easier version. You just take the run out and you just lunge and step back. I usually always start with the easier version before I introduce something harder so that you know you can go back to that easier version. Lunge, run, run, run. Lunge, run, run, run. Two more. Run, run, run. Last one. Run, run, run. And again, let's wiggle our fingers this time and do a small knee bend. Take a break. Think about how your breathing is. Are you breathing a little heavier? I like to use perceived exertion to make sure that we're working at a good rate. What that means is rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. 10 being, oh, I'm exhausted. One being I'm sitting on the couch, basically. And you want to be somewhere around a six, five, six. I like six because it reminds me of 60 up. So you can go a little higher occasionally but 
Let's try and stay in that 60% zone, or six on a scale of one to 10. All right, two more of these. Last one. Now we're gonna take that up a notch. We're gonna lunge and lift, so we're gonna add a balance element. Start with the right, lunge, balance, step, down, other leg. Lunge, lift, nice. So here's where we really start to see the carryover to climbing steps, right? So you're gonna step up on one foot, lift the other knee to get to the other foot, and then step back down. And we're gonna add that little forward action, almost like you are putting that foot on a step above. Now try to keep this slow and balanced. I am alternating feet, I've got a nice grip on my handles, but I'm not over gripping. I'm working in the center red stripe in the middle, and I'm trying hard to keep the board at a minimal wobble. It's gonna wobble a little bit. <laughs> That's the whole purpose of this product, is to make it a little less stable so you are more stable for life because life isn't always straightforward and balanced or stable. Sometimes we hit a little bump in the road, right? Good. I'm stepping up those stairs. Good. Let's do a few more lunge to lift. Lunge to lift. Let's do two more. Lunge to lift. Now we're gonna get serious here. I can hear from the beat. Aha. All right, now we're gonna step up, but I want you to step up on two and two. So we're now working from the top of the board. Let's get moving now. Let's rock it side to side. Two and two. It's time to get a little bit more of a steady state going. That's that cardio respiratory center zone around a six, 60% up. So bend one knee and shift your weight. Let's focus on the feet first. Can you feel this through your outer edge and inner edge of your foot? Feel your baby toe, feel your big toe. Build that knowledge of mind to body, feeling the pressure. Yes, teaching your body how to react to it naturally, reactively. Now bend the knee more and feel more weight going into the hip and knee, sitting back just slightly so that your chest stays behind your poles. Good. You're gonna engage more muscle this way, which is going to pop the heart rate up a little bit, so stay in that comfort zone. All right, start to lift at the end of that rock. So see how I'm just kind of lifting my foot slightly off the board? Slightly, nice keeping that rocking action going. So I've got a nice steady flow of movement. Feel free to look down. Nice, now if you want, lift it a little higher. Almost like you're trying to step up and over something to the side. Good, wiggle your fingers occasionally on those handles so we don't over grip. Good job, look down occasionally to make sure you're still on the two because we're gonna start to change that a little bit, all right? Now we're gonna step one, one, rock one and one. Now this is gonna feel more like the bunny slopes, right? You feel a little bit more in your thighs, your heel has to come up to produce that side to side action. So your calf muscles are more engaged now. Those lower legs, good, keep that rock and roll going. You got it. Close your eyes, see if you feel comfortable doing that. See if you can really connect mind to muscle, brain to feet, and then open again. Just sometimes it's fun to get rid of that visual feedback so you can really try to center in on what you're feeling, the proprioception for the movement. All right, start to lift again real light. Lift, kind of like a little walking step. Almost like you're walking on a slippery surface and you have to be real careful so that you don't slip. So you're very nice and softly positioning that foot, trying to stay around one and one, which is on the outside of that red center stripe. Four more. 
and get ready to move wider, okay? Are you ready? All right, let's step it out wide. Now, if you're pretty short levered, meaning short legs, you might not make it all the way to three and three comfortably. So go two and two, or two and a half and two and a half. But let's go back to feeling it through your feet. Big toe, a little more than the outer foot, right? Make that adjustment in your brain where you have to push off and feel the pressure. Now how about our posture? We haven't talked about that for a while. Is your chin still parallel to the floor for the most part, unless you're looking down to see where your feet are? Is your sternum lifted, shoulder blades down and back, abdominals braced? All right, push more into that hip. Really bear some weight, feel some strength action going on. Think about losing your balance to the center and then pushing back. And you can make it a little more difficult by letting go with one hand, alternating. Just see how that feels as long as you're comfortable. Don't go somewhere you're not comfortable with. Push down, push out. Beautiful. Now what about the little lift? Down, up. We're going to slow down. It's like you're taking a giant step. <laughs> nice deep breath. Try to push it back down onto three. Lift that knee, bear that weight. Rock it side. Notice how you might be feeling a little more in your core as you lift that leg. Those abdominal muscles that support your spine. Good job. Push down and bottom out. Let's do a few more. That's four. I'm a little breathy here. Three, that's good. Two. Last one, now bring it back to one and one. Ah, step off and let's get some water, water break. Talked about how important um, fluid is, not only during your workout, but all the time. Hey, Dan Metcalf, my friend, I'm glad you're watching. I hope you're drinking something right now. Okay, so what else, what else? Joint health. How about what you eat? Do you know that if you eat foods that are high in the omega-3 fatty acids, that also helps replenish those joint synovial fluids? And what are those? Oh, fatty fish, dark fatty fish, salmon, trout, um, avocados, really good foods. Um, some nuts, olive, virgin olive oil. Try to get it naturally, but if not, you can always look for a good supplement too, the fish oils. All right, now. We're back to our board, and I'd like to spend a little bit of time in the other position, facing side from the back of your board. So from the back, facing side. Now, you have an option here, gang. If you don't want to have your neck having to twist to watch me all the time, then I invite you to go ahead and reposition your board right now, all right? All right, so let's march in place holding the front handle. Keep a nice flow going again. I always like to kind of keep movement going if we can. If you're feeling that a little too challenging, take a march and make it a light knee bend. That way the blood flow doesn't pull to the extremity. It keeps coming back to the heart and brain. But it's definitely going to keep the cardio at a little lower position if you're feeling a little too breathy. All right, now we're going to step one foot up, okay, on the center. So we're going to step and drop, step a little more forward and drop, step as far forward towards the three and drop, bring it back to two, ah, and then back to center. I'm gonna do this a couple times on this side, why? Because I want to strengthen this leg that supports you and pushes you back for any lateral misstep. <laughs> what do I mean by a misstep? Have you ever been walking somewhere like on a hiking path that's not real even, and all of a sudden you find yourself rock and roll to the side a little bit? Well, you've got to use those outer hip muscles to push you back to center, catch you, and make you feel comfortable again. So I'm just laddering back and forward between the home zone, which is the red line, to the one or two, to the three, and then I'm going back the same way I came. So two, and then one. Feel the strength not just in the thigh, but in this gluteal muscle, the outer hip. Now you're holding on, so you should feel nice and balanced. Ah, what 
we're going to do is what we did in the front position too. Why? Because there is a little bit of agility needed when you get off balance. So what we're going to do on this next one is add a shuffle. So we're going to go down and one, two, three. Down and one, two, three. And if you want, you can scoot a little forward with that shuffle. One, two, three. Scoot back. Again, forward. Shuffle a little bit. Shuffle. And maybe a four count. One, two, three, four. Step back. One, two, three, four. Just feel how you can catch yourself and write your body alignment with those small little steps. This is so important for catching yourself in a fall prevention way. Forward, I'm still kind of laddering myself up and back. And this leg's getting tired, isn't it? Anytime it gets too tired for you, take a break. I'm gonna take one now. All right, this leg is tired, so let's take that ankle and roll it. Remember, motion is lotion. Again, we go out and back, out and back, good. It's low, because I don't want you to, it's already a tired muscle, so I'm just trying to loosen it up and get the blood flow pumping through it. All right, now put that foot down in the center, ease it out, you gotta turn around. So I'm gonna turn my board around. You can do yours too, think of it as a little extra upper body strength move. <laughs> Make something good out of it there, okay? Reposition, make sure you can see me. All right, so remember we started with just stepping on and off, like you're catching your weight at a slightly different angle because life doesn't always happen at one angle, right? We're laddering down and up. You don't wanna be too close to your board here because you need room to kind of put that there. And forward, nice, and down. So again, I'm just taking it back. Oh boy, I really rocked a little behind that red note there, which was also good because it made me think about what I have to do if I start to fall backwards. So try that. Wow, you gotta do a little different reaction. Good. Up and up. Just letting your brain feel it. Let your hip muscle contribute to it. Let your thigh muscle engage it. You know, once in a while when you make a little misstep, it's not about that being bad. Even if on the board, if you feel like, whoa, that didn't feel as controlled as I'd like, that's okay, because that's how you teach your body to react quickly, right? All right, so here we go. We're gonna come back and we're gonna add the shuffle, okay? So we're gonna go step, shuffle, step further forward, shuffle, step middle, Shuffle, step back, shuffle. And you know, whether you're exactly on two or three doesn't matter as long as you're coming safely forward and slowly and safely back. Good job, nice. This has got a little kick to it too in terms of the heart rate because you're moving constantly. You're using all those nice large hip buttocks and leg muscles and that's what brings the heart rate up, is large muscles being used in a rhythmic or continuous fashion with little stops. That means you stop when you need to, right? Good. Let's do it again on the way up, and once more on the way back. Good job. Last one. Beautiful. All right. Again, let's roll that ankle out a little bit. A little love to the joints. Let's kick front and stretch back. Standing tall, again, this is not meant to fatigue it, but to release it and to pump fresh blood and oxygen into those muscles. You worked so hard on this side. Good. Ooh. Excellent. All right, shake it out. Good work. Well, you're gonna get some extra credit again. Need you to flip your board. Now, if you aren't turning your board to the side and you're just turning your body to the side, that's fine too. Either way that works for you, I'm good with it. All right, why am I making you switch? Because it is important you give the leg that's working harder a little break in between. This is a real um, big focus today on leg strength and 
compensation reduction, meaning if you get off balance, what do you do and where do you do it from? So I want you to put the inside leg up right on the red mark, and we're gonna do our squats from here. So as you sit back and then you squeeze up, you wanna really use the largest or the larger, the greater, maybe the bigger buttocks muscle called the gluteus maximus. Sit back and squeeze forward. You're still gonna feel a little more in this thigh because as the upward thigh, it's bearing a little more weight. All right, good job. And I like to remind people every time I go through a move like this, this is your basic get up, get down in a chair action. You squat into the chair and then you have to get out of it. So think about that when you do it. Now as we come up, rise up onto the toe of the outside foot. That's gonna give you a real different feeling. Nice. You're gonna feel now a lot going on in that outside calf. Try to balance. Mine just went forward a little bit. Ooh. Now went back. Work on staying in the center. You can keep this hand on your thigh as you sit back because that supports your uh, posture, your spinal posture. Are you still lifting up to that calf on the outside? Nice. Heel comes up. Calf contracting. Ooh. Find that balance point. Slow down if you need to. Wiggle your fingers for a second. I know I was starting to overgrip. Good job. All right, one more level up if you want. Down and up. Ooh, balance. Down. Now remember, I just said if you want. What does that mean? Those of you that feel like this is just a little more challenging than you're ready for today, stay with the calf raise instead of the knee lift. Get up and over. This is working on leg, hip, thigh, core, and of course balance. Think about your ankle and what's happening as you lift that leg to keep your leg steady and not roll too far in on that arch of the foot. We did it to mobilize it, but we really don't want to do it. We want to avoid it when we're trying to balance. You don't want to roll your arch of your foot down. You want to keep it neutral or lifted. Good. Head high, two more. Whew, it's a leg buster workout, isn't it? Last one, hold. Now stay here. Oh yeah, I like this. Rock and roll and pull. And work that ankle. Now again, if this is too hard, put your toe down or don't rock the pole. Right, I'm a cowboy. Feel your toes and heels pushing and adding to this. Push, toe, push, heel. Push, push, toe, push, heel. That's tongue twister. Whew. Come on. Four, three, ankle strengthener. Last one. Step down. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. I'm gonna invite you to get some water because we're gonna turn that board around one more time and I wanna make sure, let's see, we got, Dan, thank you for calling me awesome, so are you. Bob, I'm so glad you made it. I hope my, everything's working good today, both for me and for you. Okay, now, turn that board around. So our focus today, just for those of you that came late, was the same joint motion as lotion. When you move those joints in every way, every day that they're able to, it brings synovial fluid into the joint and exercise in general can increase synovial fluid in the body. So we wanna keep that up so that the joints feel good. All right, so I turned my board around. I'm now positioned with the other leg being the focus for the squat. I'm gonna sit back and then bring the hips up, thinking about squeezing my gluteal muscles on the way up. Good, keeping my core engaged. Sitting back in the hips. See, what happens if I don't sit back in the hips? Then I'm gonna to put too much pressure into the kneecap on that down leg. So, really sit back. Think of the chair behind you. Take your time. Level two, if you wanna go there, is adding a calf raise, right? You might have to reposition that foot a little bit to see where you can ooh, find the balance point. Learn to love it when you have to catch the wobble because that there is the whole reason we're doing this on the board rather than the floor. We can do the same move on the floor, but when you're on the board and it wobbles, your brain wakes up 
and it tells you without you even knowing what it's saying what to do. Hopefully, you're learning to proprioceptive the toes, the inner, the outer foot, to make adjustments that you need to. Down, sit back into the hips, squeeze up. Now the next one, if you want to advance again, remember this is optional. It's just going to involve a lot more foot and ankle stability. I still like to keep my hand on this outside thigh. What it does, wiggle your fingers, is it reminds me not to let my back round. It's kind of like a bridge for good posture. See? That's it. Keep your chest up, your chin up. Balance. Perfect. If not, go back to the easier version. Your choice. Try to keep your hips as level as you can. It's kind of hard, I know, because one foot's up. So you have to really work it. Four more. Deep breath. Three more. I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling this in my respiratory and cardio system as well. And now we're going to hold it. We're going to balance or keep the toe down to make it easy. We're going to shake it. A little earthquake. Self-made earthquake. And then we're going to rock it, thinking from heel to toe, pushing that board. Push front, push back. Push front, push back. Excellent. You got it. Come on. Beautiful. Four. Three, two, strengthen that ankle. Keep that arch lifted. Last one, step down. Okay, ease it out. Excellent work. Okay, let's bring the board back to the center. I have a fun one. I think, oh, if Dan's still on, you think he'll like it. So, functionally, one thing we always want to prepare for is picking up that sock off the floor, right? I don't know, I hear a lot of people hurt their back just picking up something light. So I want us to step up to the lunge and imagine the board can ground out that you're picking something up, putting it in your pocket, and then step back. Other side. Step, lean with your whole torso, put it in your pocket, and step back. Right, let it ground if you want. If you want to make it a little more advanced, then try to keep that center action as you're reaching to put up. That's hard. Okay, step. Now, as you're reaching to pick up, I want you to watch my back. I step and I keep my back relatively straight and I make that bend happen from the hip and knee as I lower my center of gravity so that I can pick up that sock from the floor. Step, bend. Now, <laughs> super challenger for those of you that want. If you want, you can step and pick up your red ball and put it in your pocket. And then on the next rep, put it back down. Ah, step, pick up your red ball. Now remember, that's a lot. This is advancing the move quite a bit and there will be a little bit of spinal flexion to get you down to that red ball. But don't underestimate the importance of bending the hip and knee to get you there before you bend your back. All right? Last one this way. And we're going to come back and do a little heel drop. Heel drop, chest up high. That's it. Whew, take a breath. We're going to do another set of that. But when we do this set, we're going to lead with the opposite leg so that if you were picking up, you're now doing the opposite. Just good for the brain. What we do for the right, we do for the left. Is that fair? All right, tighten your glutes and your pelvic floor as you let those heels drop up and down. Good job, guys. Whew, I built up some heat. How about you? Are we ready? All right, here we go with the left foot. Again, we'll do the imaginary. Down, pick up, good, and then right. Now notice also I have to change my pull grab because I'm grabbing and lifting with the arm that's opposite the leg that's coming forward. Good job. Try to keep that as stable as possible. Get as close to the floor as possible. All right, here we go for the ball, if you want. Remember, this is a big if. Whoops, woohoo, I even lost it on that one. See how sometimes my brain had to say, I had a whole nother option there. I had to figure out which hand to grab with, and then which hand to 
put it back with. So those are the little things that your brain has to figure out that makes it such a great brain exercise here. Beautiful. Step, pick it up. Step, put it down. Love it. Step, pick it up. Once you get the flow, that flow, what is flow? Flow is when timing meets coordination. And you're like, whoa, not only do I know what I'm doing and which hand I'm dropping and picking up with, but I'm doing it in a nice rhythmic fashion, a nice flow. And that's where life gets good. Good. Remember, you don't have to pick up that ball. You can pretend it's totally up to you. Let's do two more. Let's do one more. Good. I may not have switched the last one to set around, but that's okay. All right. Push that ball back on. Good job, everybody. Whew. We're rounding out now for the last 15 minutes of the hour. I don't want to go overtime. I'm known for going overtime. Give me a minute and I'll take two because I just love what I'm doing and I love doing this for you. All right, so now we're gonna stay here in the center and put one foot so that the toe is up and the heel is down and just stretch that calf muscle for a second. All right, hold it there, hold it there and breathe. Now, I want you to step the foot a little higher and do a single leg calf raise. Single leg calf raise with a hamstring curl. So we're rocking up to the toe, and you're about one on that board position. I'm bottomed out, but that's okay. Good, let's do four more. Four more. So you notice we pre-stretched a little before we went into this move. Last one. All right, now, put that foot on top again. Put it in the middle. Tap your red ball and lift up. Tap and lift. Now I want you to do this, and I want you to feel that little sponginess as the foot makes contact with the ball. Spongy and up. Spongy and up. Think about what it feels like. How it stimulates the toes. So now, grip with your toe on the ball. Grip with your toe. Now if you want to advance this, grip and lift. Feel grip and lift. Heel, grip. Ooh, I'm losing my balance there. Like I said, that's nothing to worry about. That's the purpose. It's the regain of the balance where the learning goes on. Two more. Last one. And then push off and put the feet together. Oh, pedal them out a little bit. That was a nice low body concentration. Ankles are so important. All right, they get stiff too. So let's put this other heel up towards the center. All right, well wait, we didn't stretch first. So let's stretch it to the back. The toe is up on the back of the board. Ooh, and let's still a, still a nice calf stretch there. This is a good stretch to do anytime. All right. Now from here, step that foot up further, and we're gonna do a calf raise. So up and down. If you want, you can be balanced on that side, right? bottom out. If you want to make it a little more challenging, you can come more to the center red mark and try to keep that board steady. Totally up to you. Both are good. So whether it's grounded in lifting or a little more off balance in lifting, good. Keep going. Now at this point, heart rate should be coming down a little bit. We're not using as much of our larger muscles, right? Can you feel that? Let's do two more. We want to get ourselves into a nice lower range of work. Place that foot on the ball. Here we go, look forward, push and pull. Feel that mush of the ball under your toes. Feel your toes grip the ball a little bit as you drop into it and then lift up. As you lift up, really focus on pulling back through that shin muscle. Toe picker uppers. Those are the anti-tripper muscle. Because when you can't pick those toes up, your walk becomes a shuffle. And then your shuffle becomes a trip because you might catch on a carpet or crack or anything. So 
one of the more important muscles is that tibialis anterior or shin muscle. Four more. Ah, uh, good work. Three, two, and then bring it back and ease it out. All right, step wide and just rock side to side and through it. All right, so let's recap a little bit here. As we get a nice fluid motion going again, because why? Motion is motion. So I'm letting the heel come up, I'm letting the knee bend, I'm letting the shoulder jut, I'm letting the rib cage lift. Oh my gosh, so much joint action going on right now. It's almost like a little Tai Chi move if you want to let go. Good. Deep breath. Feel free if you're comfortable letting go and pushing and pushing and use your fingers and use your wrists and use your elbows. Push the wall away. That's it. Look in the direction you're going if you can. And I know all of this takes it up a notch. So what do you do if you don't want to? You stay at level one. Or minimize the range greatly. Keep it here. So anytime you make it smaller in range, you make it easier. Anytime you make it larger, you make it more challenging. I want everyone to feel comfortable in every class. I want those of you that are new to go, okay, I get this, I'm comfortable. And I want those of you that are advanced to put a little more mind to muscle, a little more range to motion. Good job. All right, now center out. Hands on the side, toes slightly out. Plie slightly, knees in the direction of the toes. Arms up, arms down again. Motion is lotion, shoulder and hips. Out, out, in, in. Abduction and abduction, those are the official terms for this motion. Legs and arms out and in. Go lower and higher. So the arms go higher as the knees go lower. If it bothers your knees or your shoulders, see what it could look like. Good job. Be your own best personal trainer now. Whew. Deep breaths, use your lungs. Inhale, exhale. Good work. All right, now bring those hands to thighs. Walk the feet in shoulder distance. Oh, my favorite of all, spinal rolls. <laughs> kind of like a California roll, because I'm in California. Minus the seaweed. All right, nice deep breath. Inhale and exhale. Flat back, roll through. Hands always supporting the back so that you've got somewhere to hold on. I like to tell people to think like, if you were to build a deck off your house, you wouldn't just build the deck. You'd have to have support beams that went from the front of the deck to the house, right? Well, that's what we're doing. We're building that deck that comes forward, but we're doing it with hand to thigh support so that the pressure doesn't end up in the wrong spot in the spine. Does that make sense? I feel sometimes if you know why, you're more likely to do it right. Two more. Last one. Good work. Standing up nice and tall now. Shoulder rolls back and down. Elevating and depressing the scapula. That's a joint. <laughs> the shoulder and the, the scapula move the humerus or the arm bone up, back, and around. Good work. And then if you want to make it a little bit more advanced, do one arm at a time and let it come back and around, involving more arm and not just shoulder, backstroke. And if you want to make this a little even more advanced, rotate your spine slightly in the direction the arm is going, but keep your chin up and your chest up and be aware that it feels good because that's what we were going for here is a good feeling. Loosening, limbering, re-lubricating. Two more. Last one. Now bring it in here. Here's another shoulder movement we didn't talk about. Rotation out and in. With the elbows down. It's a really nice one to wake up the posture. To get rid of some tension in that front shoulder. Good work. Deep breath. 
we haven't done much multitasking, so let's do that. Let's step the feet together. Let's kick one knee up and hold in place. Oh boy, let's hang on with one hand. I just noticed that was quite advanced. That's it. Beautiful. And then let's do the same thing other side. So your brain has to split its attention between balancing through the ankle, knee, and hip, and lightening or loosening up that rotator cuff. Good. Beautiful. And then go ahead and come back down to both feet. Knees up again. Now, I want you to scoot back with your hips, okay? Flat back, and I want you to take the right arm and place it on top of the handle. Can I show you this from the side? You stay right there, okay? Here's what it looks like from the side, except I'm holding my other pole. Now, I want you to hold that spine flat, that neck long, and then I want you to lift up and down, up and down with that arm, okay? Keep your weight back in your hips, back in your hips. This is really a good shoulder opener and again, reduce the range of motion if you need to. All right? And then bring it back down, and let's switch sides. Come up with your hips for a second. Wiggle them out, wiggle it out, wiggle it out. Sit back. Put your palm up, hips back. Now, once again, make sure your back stays nice and flat. And then lift that arm up. Now, for some of you, especially if you have some stickiness in the shoulder joint, I know I do on this side. I have this side has got a lot of scar tissue from a car accident I had, so it's never gonna move quite the same way as the other one does. But I don't wanna lose what I have in this arm. So I take it as high as I can, pain-free. Pain-free range always. Let's do two more. Let's do one more. Beautiful, let's bring that hand back to the pole. Pull the hips forward and stand tall. Come a little closer to your board so you don't have to reach out at all. Wiggle your fingers. Nice. Palms on top, right ear to right shoulder. Ah, we're in the final phase here. Left ear, left shoulder. Be gentle. Look behind the right shoulder. Nice deep breath. Engage or tighten your abs and your glutes. Bring it back to the center over the other shoulder. In your mind's eye, make sure you're stacked head over shoulder, shoulders over hips, knees in the direction of the toes, back to the center. Now a slow half circle roll. Somebody said this felt good in the warm up. Well, it's gonna feel even better in the cool down. Because I want you to take your time down and around. Nice deep breath. Ugh. Enjoying this workout means enjoying the cool down because that is the thank you for being here. <laughs> Two more times. And last one. Bring that head back up. Center out. Wiggle out a little bit. Loosen up a little bit. Stand tall. Now, from here, I exercise mobility. Look to the right. Look to the center. Look to the left. Look to the center. Right. Left, center, right diagonal, center, left diagonal, center. This is great for lubricating the eyeball socket. I guess you wouldn't really call it a joint. And now, down and center, alternating sides. Deep breaths. Nice. And then bring it back to the center. Close your eyes for a quick second. Kind of squeeze or hug your eyeball with your eyelids. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Hang on. Got to peek. Go ahead and peek. And then gently open. Nice. Now, take this arm. Inhale and lift up like a hot air balloon going up. Exhale down the side. Switch arms. Inhale and fill the ones up. Exhale and let the lungs come back down and the ribs into place. First side again. Inhale. Exhale. 
other arm. Use your nose as you inhale, warms the air. Use your mouth as you exhale. One more time, right? Inhale. Exhale. Left, inhale. Exhale. Now, to advance this, if you want only, both arms, inhale up. Exhale down. Again, inhale up. Right up the side, V angle. Exhale down. One more time. Fill up those lungs like you're filling up a raft. There. And exhale and compress. Put the hands back on. Walk the feet together. Bend and release. Good job. 60 up thumbs up today. Let me come on in and see who's here with me now and see if I can field any questions you might have. But for those of you that have to go, the hour is up. And I just want to let you know that if you hung in with me this whole time, I'm super, super proud of you because I know sometimes an hour is a lot. But you can always start with a half hour. Uh, my mom, who's 90, she'll join my classes, but she waits a little bit because she can't quite make the full hour. So she'll either come the first half and then leave about halfway or stop and just stretch on her own. Make sure you get some water as I'm talking. Uh, and or she'll come in a little bit late, depending on the workout. You need to know what you can handle. So let's see, Craig, good exercise today. Thank you, Craig. Uh, you had to modify some of the exercises to make it safer, however you enjoyed it. Okay, Craig, I would love to know in a, another email if you can, uh, which moves you felt you needed to mo modify because when you guys share with me what you're modifying then i can share that with all of you and believe me if one person needs it usually there's more than one that does bob i'm glad you're here dan i saw your comment earlier and i'm glad you were here with us today don't forget dan teaches every tuesday and thursday at the same time and sheila i hope you hung in for my final neck stretch uh, i always like to kind of uh, create the beginning and the ending with a, a similar feel or um, loosening type exercises. All right. Well, if we don't have any more questions, I will let you go till next week and I will have more tips and more things. So just to recap again, motion is lotion, move joints in every way, every day, drink more fluid to keep those joints hydrated. Don't get dehydrated. Uh, eat foods loaded with omega three fatty acids, keep your weight in line, try not to get overweight, it's a lot more stress on the joints, and exercise, because exercise actually helps produce more synovial fluid, which is the key ingredient to a nice sloshy movement versus a er, 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 rickety one. So it's uh, important, uh, joint health. I know I suffer with a shoulder and a hip, so I can feel you guys when you have issues, and I'll try to share mine as well so that we all can 60 up healthier and uh, definitely see it as a 60 up. Okay, take care and thanks again for joining me, you guys. Kathy Stevens signing off. Big heart. <laughs>